What you see here is my KK8, which is the big brother to the quick kiln. And I thought I'd show you how to set the kiln up to get ready to do some melting and the proper way of lighting the kiln. Our burner is inserted into the burner port to where the brass tip just barely shows on the inside of the kiln. Once you see that, you back it up about a quarter of an inch so that the end of the brass burner is inside of the insulation approximately a quarter of an inch. The way the burner works is that when you turn the propane on, the propane rushing through the tube draws atmosphere in these holes, travels through the tube, and combusts on the inside of the kiln when the velocity of the gases slow down. When I first light the burner, it's going to kind of pop and snap and make a chortling noise. And then once the combustion is taking place in the kiln, it's going to just sound like a jet. That's what you want. You also don't want the tip of your burner exposed to the circular flames in there because what it'll do is it'll overheat the burner and <laughs> it's just not a good situation. When the burner is act operating properly it will get hot about to here which is discolored but back here you can actually touch it it remains at room temperature because of the propane and the atmosphere going through it. Um, we have our pyrometer inside and it's exposed approximately a half of an inch and what the pyrometer does is the pyrometer is measuring the temperature of the flame so immediately the pyrometer registers the temperature of the flame and there's a little bit of a lag time to let the kiln warm up to that temperature but it's not very much so at any rate um, we'll go ahead and try and light this there's two ways to light it you can take a long handled barbecue uh, propane lighter and reach down inside here make sure you got a glove on and turn your gas on and light it that way but I like to light it on the outside here and what I do is I take my Bic lighter I'll hold my Bic lighter here and I'll open the valve up and it's going to kind of pop and make a chortling noise and what I do is I open up the gas until it creates enough velocity for it to travel through the burner and only combust on the inside once I light it it's a little bit noisy until I get the lid on but once I get the lid on I'll go ahead and show you what's going on so let's give this a shot here I'll light my lighter put it here and I'll turn the gas on functioning properly. We're going to put the body of the kiln on. And then we'll put the lid on. Now, what's going on is just exactly like I said. The atmosphere in the propane is traveling through the burner tube to the inside of the kiln where it's combusting. And now this is what I call an idle position. It's just burning nice and slow and even in the idle position already the temperature of our kiln, not the kiln but the flame right now, is approximately 1100 degrees. So when the kiln is burning properly in the idle mode it's going to idle up around 12 to 1500 degrees and what I like to do is I like to let the kiln warm up slowly and we've only been burning here for 30 seconds and already we're about 1200 degrees I'm going to open it up just a little bit and now it 
this warming up. If you don't get this thing burning properly, it's going to chortle and pop and snap and make all sorts of noises. And what's going on is the combustion is taking place inside of the burner rather than on the inside of the kiln. And it's like I said, right now, our flame temperature in there is approaching 1500 degrees, and yet your burner is cool. If I plug the holes up, you can hear the difference. So it's pulling the atmosphere and the propane through and combusting just on the inside of the kiln. The kiln is in a idle mode right now. The inside is starting to turn orange. And idling, we're almost 1500 degrees. That's the proper way for the kiln to be functioning. And your burner remains cool. So, we're inside the garage right now, and inside the garage is not the place to do a demo. When the, uh, the sun goes down a little bit, I'm going to wheel it out in front when we get down to the dusk a little bit and then we'll go ahead and we'll melt some silver and pour some silver. So there's your kiln sitting there in the idle mode. Your temperature on your pyrometer is 1500 degrees. You have a flame coming out of the top of the kiln, approximately four inches tall right now. Your burner is cool. It's not even hot. And that's the proper method and the proper idle mode of your kiln. So, I'll get back to you this evening after we wheel this outside and we got something to melt. Hi guys, uh, Patrick here with goldkilns.us again. I wheeled this thing out in front and uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and light the kiln up. I'll let it warm up and then we'll go ahead and see if we can't pour us a, a silver bar here. First, let's see if I can get this puppy to light. Okay guys, <clears throat> I'm back. Um, kiln's running about, about 2,000 degrees right now. Didn't take very long, about five minutes, but to keep this thing fairly short. Uh, what I've done is I like to set my crucible on top of the kiln as it's warming up. And let the crucible warm up a little bit. That helps to minimize thermal shock when you put it in there. So at any rate, um, I'll grab this go ahead and charge the crisp. Pick it up off of there. Set it over here. We'll remove the body and the lid. And we got our crucible. We'll set our crucible in the kiln. Center it. and we'll go ahead and 
wait for it to warm up again. It dropped a couple of hundred degrees when you put that cold crucible in there and when you take the lid off and then put it back together. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the burner up just a little bit. We dropped down to about 1800 degrees. And at any rate, we'll go ahead and let her cook here and let it get melted. We'll pull it off there and pour us a bar. I get back to you. Okay, guys, I'm back. I got the mold on top of the kiln. I like to preheat my molds when I'm pouring, so I'll take the mold over and set it over here. And so far I haven't screwed anything up. We'll let it cool down. I'll chip the flux off of it and I'll show you what we got. Okay guys, we're back. Um, I think it's cooled off a little bit. It's probably still plenty hot, but let's go ahead and see if we can pop it out of the mold. Yeah, yeah. Popped right out of the mold. We'll set that right there. I'll take and see if we can get that flux off of it. It's still pretty hot. Flux doesn't chip off very good when it's hot. Chips off a lot better when it's cool. But we're trying to rush this a little bit. So, I'd like to let it cool off a little more before I get too carried away, but at any rate, there's the result. One pound troy ounce silver bar and I'll run it underneath some cool water and that'll knock a lot of that flux off of it and then I'll put it in vinegar overnight and that'll dissolve the rest of it but there you go KK8 thanks for watching